The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Solomon bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice, O heavenly powers, sing, choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. These words from the ancient Easter hymn, The Exalted, which we heard sung at the beginning of of our Mass tonight, express the great and overflowing joy of all creation at this greatest event in the history of the world, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Jesus' death on the cross was the victory over sin. Jesus' resurrection was the victory over death. Our readings tonight from the Easter Vigil wonderfully recap our salvation history. In the beginning, which by the way are the first words of the book of Genesis and also the first words of the Gospel of John, we heard of God's creating all things. Let there be light were the first words spoken by God in creation. In six days, God created the world with man and woman being made in God's own image and likeness with freedom, reason, and the capacity to love. And God saw that it was very good. Sadly, it wouldn't be long before our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, would turn away from God in disobedience. But God immediately let his plan be known to send to us a savior to restore our broken relationship with God. As the exalted so beautifully puts it, O happy fault, O necessary sin of Adam, that won for us so great a redeemer. The deliverance that Jesus would bring was foreshadowed or hinted at by God's great saving act of the Old Testament, the Exodus event, which we heard as our second reading tonight, in which God delivered his chosen people from slavery in Egypt and brought them to the promised land with great signs and wonders, even splitting the Red Sea to do it. The deliverance that Jesus would bring through his passion, death, and resurrection would be far greater, a deliverance from the power of sin and death for all peoples of all times. Through Jesus, we are closer to God than even Adam and Eve were in the garden before the fall. In baptism, we are baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. Our sins are washed away. We become a new creation, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Advocate, to dwell in our hearts. All who are thirsty, come to the water, as the prophet Isaiah invited us in today's third reading. We come to the water in baptism, And then let us continue to drink of this life-giving water of the Holy Spirit every day after. In confirmation, we receive a further outpouring of the Holy Spirit and his sevenfold gifts of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, piety, fear of the Lord, and courage to fulfill our mission to go out to all the world and proclaim the good news. In the Eucharist, we are given our food for the journey of life, the very body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is the cup of my blood. Do this in memory of me. This is not symbolic language. Reading John chapter 6, the Bread of Life discourse, we are told Jesus said, I am the living bread 
that came down from heaven. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. What an incredible gift we are given in the Eucharist of the very flesh and blood of Jesus to bring us nourishment, healing, and life. May we never take this greatest of gifts for granted, but with profound gratitude, offer the Lord our thanks, our praise, our love, and our service. Rejoice, O heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. <laughs> 